so last video i missed out on speaking on the retrogrades that we'll be experiencing from that moon activity in june until the end of the year so the first one is the retrograde in saturn and pisces look out for that um key items to look out for is pisces rules over the third eye which is ruled naturally by neptune so with a retrograde and saturn in the third eye it's just telling us there's a whole bunch of shadow work that needs to be done there's possibly a whole bunch of activities that we participated in in the shadow space that we thought no one would know would come to light and saturn will possibly slide through um pisces for the five month period that it will be there just to shake things up just a little bit to bring about some discipline to bring about some awareness that not everything that is done in the dark is okay you know certain things that are done in the dark do harm other beings and spiritual lights around us so just do the work work on the shadows work on those um spaces where you need to heal and furthermore remember that healing deals with honoring the code of hurting another most of the time we're doing all this hurt because we're trying to heal without acknowledging that we actually did hurt another so saturn will be in pisces from june 17th until november 4th just to let us know that you know as you're doing your healing process just keep in mind that you possibly did do harm to another and so you need to heal yourself but also forgive yourself and if the opportunity presents itself ask for forgiveness on the other side but if that's not the case then keep working on that personal intimate spiritual work and let's keep growing and keep healing now let's talk about this next retrograde which is in neptune now we just left the retrograde in saturn with pisces and now we're in a retrograde in neptune still in pisces but by the time the retrograde ends it will be in capricorn so here we go with the retrograde in pisces with neptune being the natural ruler of pisces pisces is a natural <clears throat> excuse me enabler pisces is a type of energy that is not aggressive and when it feels threatened it backs away however with its enabling ways pisces allow too much to pass before it without saying anything what that means to you as an individual you need to really look into yourself look in this everything i'm seeing is shadow work everything i'm seeing deals with childhood and shadow work it has nothing to do with how old you are it has nothing to do with your knowledge it has nothing to do with your wisdom it has everything to do with your childhood something happened when each and every one of us were a child that separated us from our natural path in our life journey somewhere along the line we got crossed and this these two retrogrades with the next retrograde that i'm about to talk about will kind of show you what i'm talking about so this deals with childhood focus on that moment when you lost faith in something that moment when you became sad for the first time that moment where you felt neglected or abandoned these are the feelings and energies we're talking about focus on that and allow and respect the energies that are passing through in retro meaning they're moving slower than they normally do and it appears that they're moving backwards but they're not naturally moving backwards they're just moving slower respect that energy and use that energy to learn more about yourself to reignite your memory so that you can actually see and understand who you are what wronged you and what path to take to actually heal those are the only messages i have for the two retrogrades we're going to head into the next retrograde all right so this confirms our childhood situation we have chiron going retro in aries on july 23rd which kind of is the last of the quote unquote childhood healing process we start in saturn in june then we keep going through neptune in june and then we're reaping chiron in july now the funny thing about this is 
Remember earlier when I said that individuals who feel like they've been wrong, forgive yourself and ask for forgiveness. But I also stated that if it's not possible to ask for forgiveness, heal yourself and move on. This is Kiron's energy. Kiron deals with our childhood, our hidden pains in childhood, our hidden traumas of childhood. If you feel like you've been wrong and you're going to feel it, like, don't get me wrong. It's not like this retrograde period is going to go by and you're not going to feel it. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel the depression. You're going to feel the sadness. You're going to feel the weariness. You're going to feel the feeling of lostness. You're going to feel deja vu of, oh my God, I've gone through this. Am I going through it again? And that's all if you haven't healed. If you have actually healed, you're going to feel it, but you're going to acknowledge it. And you're going to say, wow, let me pat myself on the back because this is actually everything I've gone through. This is my real book of life. The only reason the adult version of me can sit here and do whatever it is that I'm doing is because that little boy or that little girl survived all of this. Congratulations, me. So at the end, this is true. It was never about a bag or money or materialism. It was just about acknowledging that little person that we once were that suffered and that we need to acknowledge and thank for being strong enough to survive, to get through all of that, that it, we, male or female, got through. And we're actually sitting here. Now, if you go through this retrograde correctly, there will be a level of humility that will take over you. There will be an exceptional level of growth that will catch up to you because there's nothing like someone who has suffered trauma. We're quieter than others. We're more reserved than others. We're more respectful than others. As children, we were the most kindest, most sweetest kids. And it wasn't because we didn't have the devil within us. We probably had more devil in us than anybody else. But it's because we had felt. And when you feel, you understand. And you don't do what you don't want to experience. And that is the message for Kiron retrograde in Aries. And furthermore, Aries deals with the I am energy. Aries deals with the acknowledgement of self, the solar plexus, the soul. So with Aries being retro in Chiron and Aries, when harmed, especially as a child, would retreat back into themselves, just like Taurus. Those are the two signs that are known to just pull back away from the world. Like that I've given the world everything that I can give them and I have nothing left to give. And I realized the problem is not me, but the problem is literally you. And within everything that I am, I can't make up any more excuses for you. And I have to acknowledge and understand that you're the problem, not me. That is the retro in Chiron with um, the energy being ruled by Aries. Aries rules over our solar plexus. Aries rules over Aries is ruled by Mars, our ability to fight instead of taking flight. And Aries is ruled by the sun. So those are all those energies that come together when we're harmed as a child that teaches us now as an adult, it is time to stand up for yourself. There is no boogeyman. The boogeyman is a small penis individual who runs around in the dark trying to scare children. The boogeyman could never scare an adult. And the only reason the boogeyman could never scare an adult is because an adult has a blueprint of who they are. So recognize that and understand under the sign of Aries, it's time for you to stand up for yourself. It is not time for you to wither within and cower. Oh my God, this energy is so much. I'm sad. No, it's time to be an adult. I'm sad. Why am I sad? I have a position that I love. I have children that I love. I have a beautiful home. I have friends. I, I enjoy great dinners, great parties. My family love me. Why am I sad? It is not time to cower in and let out those horrible frequencies into the world under the pretense of being sad or depressed. It is not that time. Aries in Chiron's retrograde, it's time for us to acknowledge the fact that, man, I was a badass when I was a kid. 
Look at everything that I've gone through. Wait a minute, adult me. And this would be the child you looking at you. Wait a minute, you're going to cower over and let these same outdated energies take you down? You better pull your pants up and be a big, big man or a big woman. It is not time to be weak. It is time to be strong. And furthermore, this is the child you. I did not survive for you to embarrass me. So acknowledge that and grow. We're going to get into the moons. And this is something to keep in mind as well. The Chiron retrograde in Aries will go on from July 23rd until December 27th. Use that time to heal. Use that time to journal. Use that time to set the goals for the future. Every new year is a new year, but every new year is pressure that you're adding on to your good self. So without the healing process, all you're doing is adding more pain and more triggers to yourself. Use that Ram's energy. And remember, when I'm when I'm speaking on light, positive things, I tell you guys, I love the energy of the Ram. But when it comes to that serious energy of the Ram, the sadness, the dealing with the negativity of life, the um, raw energy of life, the Ram and the Bull are the two energies that you have to use. And with Chiron being retro and um, Aries, it's not dealing with our socioeconomic selves that Taurus has to deal with. It's not dealing with the emotional self that Cancer has to deal with. It's not dealing with those secretive selves that Scorpio has to deal with. It's dealing with you, that little consciousness that was within yourself, looking out at the world, perceiving the world from your own personal point of view. It's dealing with that being. Not the fake person that your mom created inside of you through all of whatever you went through as a child. Not the fake being that your father created, but you, the individual when you're by yourself, even when you were by yourself as a kid and you're by yourself as an adult, you're still that same person. The you that majority of the world around you don't know about. You. That's the being that Kiron, Retro, and Aries is going to be working with. And you need to really like wrap yourself around the you that is and grow from that. Okay, I'm done now. We're going to go into the month. So the month of July brings about the tarot card of the page of pentacles. I remember pentacles deal with finances. It's a Taurus energy. It's an earth energy. Um, pentacles normally deals with new beginnings new investments new ventures new projects inspiration the initial stage of a creative project or the like um coming off of the, the retrograde what i wrote down was be aware of the value of money wealth possessions careers physical health and how to manifest blessings many of the time we're blocked in our adulthood and the conversation that I see the energies and the cards are having is that with the retrogrades, we have the center around our childhood being the focus. Now, with the center around our childhood being the focus, we have to deal with the fact that we're in the process with this page of pentacles of trying to build and grow anew. But yet we still have this old, outdated energy that's lingering behind us in our shadow that deals with childhood trauma. Now, throughout the retro readings, I told everyone, I know I got a little agitated, but the energy that I was picking up on was very chaotic and very agitating. And I told everyone, you have to learn to heal. You can heal through forgiveness or you can heal through self-healing self-acceptance and forgiving the self for actually being put through all the nonsense that you had to be put through and then another side of healing is literally dropping all of that baggage and all of that weight and starting new starting new does not always mean just picking up from where you were and just running into something else starting new can be as simple as daily routines starting new can be as simple as your day-to-day -day life like instead of taking this route 
you're going to take another route to work. And by taking that new route to work, it creates a new form of thought patterns that you have. That's a form of starting new. Starting new can be um, not necessarily switching from one career to another, but let's say within your career, you've been looking at this promotion. Now you're actually going to get the skills. You're going to get the training. You're going to get the, um, the actual uh, recommendations that you need for that new um, position. That's a career move that enhances your life. Those are ways to start new by continuing our ongoing life. Now, on the other side of that, if that doesn't work for you, starting new is the hardest part of all, which would be literally dropping everything you have going on at the moment and just walking away from it and starting fresh on a blank page. I don't advise that for any living adults. That doesn't seem like a proper life journey. Um, there's no way, nowhere in our lives where we've ever had to drop everything, lose everything we've ever worked on and start with a blank slate. That's not smart. I would say evaluate where you are, evaluate where you, you are in the world. And then while you're evaluating where you are in the world, you'll be able to make enhancement to your life. That's a form of starting anew. You can build off of what you've already um, created. That's um, strengthening your foundation is what you're doing. Um, just keep in mind, as always, there's no magic to this. Um, that's why um, I think a lot of people who either follow tarot and astrology for their own personal reasons or that do it professionally, they end up quitting because the cards, the way they're perceived is not the way that I've noticed that they are being presented. For example, whenever someone sees pentacles, they get so excited as if tomorrow they're going to like walk into a, a different story than the story that they've been um living when the truth behind the tarot is it's just helping you it's just teaching you that um hey you asked to get recognition it's like an answer to a prayer you asked to get recognition to um a question that you had here's the answer and the answer is that tomorrow is going to be the best day of your life it's just an answer it's just it's just a direction that you're you're being given and that's all it is it's not magic um the magic is in you wrapping yourself around your own life and really taking control over your day-to-day -day, your emotional output your um your level of participation in different areas areas and aspects of your life that's the magic that's the the totality of the magic the magic is not in I drop a card in front of you. For example, I drop the page of pentacles in front of you and a page of pentacles says that there's great gain to be, um, realized. Um, there's gold at the end of the tunnel, work hard and you'll accomplish your goal. It's not a guarantee because what you have to take into consideration is that just like when we were talking about the retros and the hurt childhood, we are all people living in this world. We interact with each other via our careers going to the um the um grocery store stopping by our kids school to see them um to see their teacher we're all people that have been children at one point or another and at any point in time the celestial energies do have an effect on each and every one of us some of us just have a way of interpreting them and others don't so that's kind of a way to really hone down and ground this energy when it comes to processing tarot cards it's not magic it's not voodoo it's not dark magic it literally is you ask and you are receiving an answer you prayed and you're get receiving your blessing that's as simple as it is i hope this helps you guys and now we're finally going to go into the moods Capricorn is an energy when balance is very disciplined, 
is hardworking, knows what he or she wants out of the world, and is unafraid in working hard to attain it. The opposite of Capricorn's balanced self is the unbalanced or closed Capricorn, which becomes chaotic, gossipy, and untrustworthy. We're not dealing with the closed or the unbalanced Capricorn. We're dealing with the balanced Capricorn. Now, the balanced Capricorn right now will be feeling a sense of renewal as we're coming out of these retrogrades. And it's literally the season of cancer, the emotional psychologist of the Zodiac. And while we're going through all of our changes, what Capricorn seems like she's going to be doing is holding our hands, letting us know that everything is okay, letting us know that um, we do have, with all this chaotic energy, we do have the energy of the Page of Pentacles along with her energy to, um, to utilize and keep us in comfort. And the only reason I say she, she is because um earth signs are females so you'll always see me say you always hear me say she for earth and water signs and he for fire and air signs because the natural rulership of those signs are feminine and masculine so um i'm not getting anything negative with the capricorn energy i'm getting the fact that she's reminding us don't forget i am ruled by saturn and my ruler will be retro in pisces so my ruler will be doing work in the house of pisces so if you guys have any effect to that retro back into your um, lessons of your childhood that you need to process and then you should be able to get a bigger picture of what my ruler is trying to tell tell you so we're dealing with the colors of white and silver silver is a color of power silver is a color of technology of like cleanliness immaculateness and white is a color of renewal um, in our modern day society everyone associates white with perfection um, but remember that white is a color that repels and black is the color that absorbs so with the all the energies that we're processing and with this capricorn energy i would use the color silver for the first part of my um meditation for example if you have reached that space in your childhood trauma healing process and you're like okay i'm settled you know, I've done my kill bill list of everyone who wronged me and I am fully aware of what they did to me and I'm fine with it. I'm ready to start diving into the emotional side of everything to realize what what can I do for myself to move forward. I would use the color silver because that is the color of you just ready to move on and to go into the future. But if you're still dealing with all of those traumas, you're still dealing with all of those pains and sufferings, I would use the color white only because you need to fully um, acknowledge what you've gone through and acknowledging what you've gone through helps with the healing process. So that's what I would do if I were you. If you have all of these stones available, you see how they're laid out here? I would lay them out just like that on the base chakra, like lay flat on your back and put the five stones as they appear on your base chakra and do your meditation that way. If you don't have all of them, but if you do have the capability to get to a store, get the smoking quartz because it is a repelling protective stone. The hematite, which is also a protective stone, and the red avaturin, which is a grounding protective stone. But if you can get all of them, I would get all of them. And I would use that with the dragon's blood smudging stick because that's a protective stone. I mean, a protective smudge is like an extra layer of protection. And what it will do is it will repel the negativity that is in your life it will repel it's called dragon's blood for a reason and it will repel that which plays the role of the spike dragon in your life you'll be surprised who it is that have harmed you 
that you possibly still have in your life that you possibly would not even think about throwing to the side letting go of that relationship you'd be surprised so use this space because we have retrogrades in the third eye we have retrogrades in the base chakra we have retrogrades in childhood energy like we have retrogrades going around everywhere if you can obtain all five stones obtain them and meditate with them but put all of them on your base chakra because what you're doing is you're pulling all of that negative energy out of your base chakra and you're releasing it and this is one of those um, meditative spaces that when you're done it's important to like open windows open doors and let that energy out so that it doesn't sit around hovering over you um trying to re-manifest itself we're gonna go into the new moon So we've left the disciplined, hardworking Capricorn, Capricorn, <laughs> Capricornus energy, and we're heading into the emotionally well-balanced Cancer energy. And you may ask, why are you so focused on the balanced, positive side of all these signs? Because there is karmic balance in the universe. We can't be going through all of these retrogrades for the actual signs ruling over the moon activities to also be negative. There has to be balance. And from how I was feeling before and how I'm feeling now, what I've picked up on is the fact that there was a lot that happened to us as children that we suppressed. And when they start coming back up, it's like a war that's being fought that everyone's eyes are finally being able to be placed on and there's some sad parts some angry parts some um, shocking parts but most importantly there is that moment where healing takes place true healing takes place and so I think that's where we're at um, we have two very powerful signs um, taking control over the month of july as far as moon activities now when we're in this um cancer new moon we will be entering into the leo the sign of leo on july 23rd so um look out for that and also keep in mind that for both of our um moon activities we're in monday's energy we're literally under the moon's natural energy both of those um moon activities fall on monday so as they fall on monday and we're under the moon's rulership and the moon is trudging along with us because remember the moon rules over our intuition and our emotional body and cancer is the natural ruler over our emotional body so the moon is dealing with the retros and all that old energy swooping up and then it's also dealing with keeping balance with the capricorn energy and also keeping emotional wellness with the cancer energy so it's up to us to really round ourselves around what we need to do to actually heal and reach that healing process let's go into the candles and the stones let's close out the month with combining the two energies of the silver and the white candles together if you have the capability it can be unscented the thing with materialism is our intention that set the results so it could be unscented candles it can be um scented candles as long as they're like how you see here the pillar candles or you can use the little skinny candles i forgot what you call those grab a silver one grab a <laughs> grab a silver one grab a white one and let's burn those together if you have essential oils let's use the frankincense myrrh essential oil let's smudge with a regular sage smudge stick and then let's um light those two candles together and I'm going to pull the stones right now. 
let's work with the sunstone carnelian and red jasper red ja red jasper is to ground the sacral energy carnelian is to balance and the sunstone is to expand that energy to connect to the other chakras in your body so that's what we're going to do we're going to do our silver and white candles regular sage smudging and we're going to use the frankincense myrrh essential oils and then we're going to get the cornelian red jasper and sunstones if you have them grab them if you don't they don't have to be large stones you could just grab the little small beads as long as you have the energy and the frequency of the stone around you it's your own frequency and intention that will set the rest of the pace so keep that in mind one quick note before we close out this video, there will be a retro in Venus starting in Capricorn on the 23rd, which is about six days after that new moon in Cancer, and it will end on September 4th in Leo. Um, retrogrades in Venus always ask us to evaluate our love lives, evaluate how we love. It can be how we love ourselves, others the environment around us but in capricorn and leo is teaching us to be more disciplined with how we give love and how we receive love so focus on that while you're adding to your previous meditations so here's our month if you guys made it through this this entire video you kind of get the big picture of why i kind of sounded agitated in the beginning of the video so this is our month this is pretty much what's going on throughout the month of july this is what we're processing so we're starting our month on july 3rd still in retrogrades in saturn and neptune both in pisces at that moment they will both be in pisces with a chiron retrograde in aries and all three of these retrogrades are dealing with our childhood, our third eye space within our childhood. Then we are in the energy of Capricorn. And if you know a Capricorn in your life, you know Capricorns are strong. But this right here is some craziness. And then we have the pentacles the page of pentacles which is sitting here trying to feed us some positive energy like it's gonna be okay just get through it just keep your eyes closed and stay on the roller coaster don't jump off the roller coaster right but at the end of the day it's up to us as individuals to do the work and to really push through those pains to get to the end and then as we're trudging along in the month on the 23rd venus goes retro in capricorn right after that new moon in cancer so i mean you see it you get it it's a big month do the prep work month to month to get the work done to heal um i doubt going into 2024 we'll still be having this healing conversation this healing thing is like it's an energy that i'm receiving like it's a very hurt like it's like a if i could um picture it it's like a if i could um present it the way i see it it's like a crowd i see a crowd of people but they're all hurt and that's why i keep speaking of healing 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 we have to heal you remember i told you guys healing is not always pretty sometimes healing is the ugliest phase that you can go through and so <laughs> I got this message like some a part of me or something was just like um healing can be like when you first start growing dreadlocks and you're going through that ugly beady bead ugly phase <laughs> so i don't know if that means something but that's the, the information i just got so remember our stones remember our candles for the full moon we're going to be working with silver if we're ready to move on white if we're still working and then in the new moon process, we're going to integrate those two energies together and use white and silver. And as far as the stones, for our full moon, we'll be working with the hematite, the red aventurin, and the smoky quartz. And then for the full moon, we'll be working with the red jasper, the sunstone, and the carnelian. 
keep all that in mind guys i love you guys so much um let's just continue healing and loving each other all right see you guys next month